Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Pi Sugar S Plus from the Pi Sugar Company. Now, if you're not familiar with these Pi Sugar devices, basically what it is is a battery pack and a PCB for your Raspberry Pi. And this one is designed for the Raspberry Pi 4, but it will work with the 0, 3, and 3B+. For this video, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model, but when it comes to the new S Plus model of the Pi Sugar, it does come in a lot cheaper than the original Pro 2, but it is dumbed down a bit. We can no longer access the online UI to uh, see what kind of battery percentage we have and everything like that, but we still get that power on switch, USB type C. There's also micro USB and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery paired with their custom PCB that does output three amps for your Raspberry Pi 4. I'm a big fan of the original Pi Sugar 2, and I did do a video on that. I'll leave a link for it in the description, but a lot of people were complaining about the price. It is $49.99, but the new S Plus model aimed to fix that. This one's coming in at $29.99 instead of $49.99 for the original Pro 2, but we still get that 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and you can get anywhere from 5 to 10 hours of battery life out of this thing. It really depends on what your Raspberry Pi is doing. This unit does output 5 volts at 3 amps, so it's plenty for the Raspberry Pi 4. This battery is replaced. It magnetically attaches to the PCB, and as long as you have power to this board, the Raspberry Pi will still be powered up, and you can kind of hot swap these batteries if you ever needed to do that. It's super easy to install and get set up, and the way it attaches to your Raspberry Pi is from the bottom. It uses these pogo pins that line right up with the bottom of your GPIO. It's actually a pretty ingenious idea here. That way we're not blocking off the top of the Raspberry Pi, and you can actually install a cooler. And by the way, Pi Sugar does make a case. I wasn't able to get my hands on it. If I can later on down the road, I will do a video on it. Here's a closer look at the battery and the PCB. This is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and they're claiming five to eight hours of battery life out of this thing. The battery does attach to the PCB using this magnet. And as for the PCB itself, it's got a lot of stuff built in here. We have our battery in, USB type C, a function switch, which will allow us to turn this on while the power switch is on, micro USB, in case you don't have access to USB type C to charge that battery up, we also have a two pin five volt power output for different accessories. And the first thing I thought of was just a little fan to cool the CPU down. And we also have an auto startup switch. So you can easily turn this function on or off. When comparing the Pi Sugar S Plus to the Pi Sugar 2 Pro, this is missing some features like the built-in RTC, that web UI, so we can actually reprogram the switches easily just by a click of a button. And there's no way to set up the S Plus for timing boot. With the other one, you could actually just go in and say exactly what time you want this to come on and go off. With the S Plus, we just can't do that. But it's still super easy to install. Like I mentioned, the PCB actually goes on the bottom of your Raspberry Pi. I'm using that Raspberry Pi 4. And it's going to line right up with those GPIO pins. So if you don't have GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi, if you desoldered them for some reason, this probably won't work so easily. But I mean, you could always solder it to the board if you wanted to. So basically, we just need to line this up correctly. It comes with all of the mounting hardware. And there is a little bit of Kapton tape uh, on these screw holes. So I just kind of make an indention in them. Makes it a lot easier to get these screws in. So we'll line that right back up with those GPIO pins. And really all you need to do is line this up with the holes on the board. We got four screws to secure it. And what I do is just go in almost all the way with each of them. And then I tighten down the GPIO side just a little more just to make sure that this is making a good connection with those pogo pins. And once I have that PCB mounted, it's time to install that battery. But real quick, I wanted to show you how it lines up with those pins. Really nice little design here. I've always liked this. This is what they did with the original Pi Sugar, and they've brought it over to the Pi Sugar S Plus. Last thing that's left to do is plug the battery in, and it mounts super easy to the back because it uses a magnet. And yeah, I mean, the Pi will sit flat. You may have to bend the wire just a little bit so it's not hitting the table or whatever you have this laying on. But now we have a fully battery powered Raspberry Pi 4. I'm running Raspberry Pi OS on this Pi 4 and the only thing I'll need to plug in is that HDMI because I'm now fully battery powered. We have that LED indicator and the unit is now booting up from a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Now recently I've been running all of my Raspberry Pis from an SSD and uh, the boot time is so much quicker than SD. I forget how long it takes. But here we are in the desktop running on full battery power. So I've got the Pi Sugar S Plus fully charged, and what I wanted to do was just run this down. It's definitely going to take a little while, but I think I'm just going to do some video playback. I'm going to open up the Chrome browser, 
We'll do some 720p YouTube playback and just see how long it lasts. And the results are in. Raspberry Pi 4, 8GB model, connected over Wi-Fi, it's AC Wi-Fi. Continuous YouTube 720p streaming, 6 hours and 23 minutes before it shut down on me, which isn't bad at all. Because if we look at their Tendi store page here, you can see that they claim 10 hours on the Raspberry Pi 3B. So 6.5 hours on a Raspberry Pi 4, which does pull more power than the 3B on a 5000 milliamp hour battery, isn't bad at all. If we scroll down a bit here, we have all the information we need to know about this, and they have a comparison chart between the Pi Sugar 1, Pi Sugar S, the S Plus, which we took a look at, Pi Sugar 2, and the Pi Sugar 2 Pro. Pi Sugar 2 Pro has all of the features built in, like that Web GUI, and basically with the S Plus, we're missing the Web GUI, no RTC support, so we don't have a real time clock built in, and timing boot which is basically a scheduled power on and power off that you can program from that web GUI. But uh, everything else here is supported. Plus we have that custom button on the side that can be programmed. So yeah, that $20 price difference does make sense, but if you need all of those features, I would definitely go with the Pi Sugar 2 Pro. When charging up the Pi Sugar's battery, you cannot go from the USB Type-C port on the Raspberry Pi. You do have to plug directly into the Pi Sugar's PCB. That's why we have that USB Type-C and micro USB. But when this is plugged in, it will also power the Pi and charge the battery. Unfortunately, it just won't charge from that USB port on the Pi itself. But overall, I mean, this isn't bad. It's right in the same place and it's not hard to get to it. Another way you could actually charge this up and power the Raspberry Pi is over solar. Now, I do have a video coming up soon, so keep an eye on the channel. I've been playing in this for a while. I just really hadn't gotten around to it. But the Pi Sugar is going to make this a lot easier, and I do have this 30 watt panel along with this controller, but I'm waiting on a new controller that actually has a battery built in. It's just a smaller 10,000 milliamp hour battery, but uh, what this should allow me to do is run this Raspberry Pi continuously on solar power. So if you're interested in seeing the setup on that, definitely keep an eye on the channel. Hopefully I'll have that up in the next week or so, it's just really a matter of getting that new controller in. But with a setup like this, the Raspberry Pi itself really isn't running off of solar power, it's running off of the batteries, and in turn, the solar panel itself is charging those batteries up. But it should be pretty cool. So in the end, if you were looking for a less expensive alternative to the original Pi Sugar 2 Pro, then the Pi Sugar S Plus is definitely for you. It is missing some of those features, but it's something that I can personally live without, and with that $20 price reduction, I do think this would make sense. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking up the S Plus or even the 2 Pro, I will leave links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.